Dear brothers and sisters, nearly 80 Tibetans have set themselves on fire in the past three years for the cause of their people's freedom. This month alone, the world bore witness to 15 more tragic and heroic self-immolations. We all have a strong sense that they will not stop. Even as, even as I speak, there may be more actually happening. The martyrdom of so many devoted and peaceful Tibetan people have overwhelmed me with grief. As Chinese, we stand before you shamed, embarrassed, and humble, shamed by the unspeakable suffering that the Chinese government has systematically inflicted upon the people of Tibet, embarrassed by the general uh, apathy of the Ch Chinese general public, embarrassed, humble, because we have been brought to our knees by the weight of our grief, the force of our anger, and the unbearable feelings of helplessness in the face of such powerful evil. But we draw strength and inspirations from you, my dear Tibetan brothers and sisters. You inspire us through your endurance, despite these grievous assaults on your language, your culture, your religion, your mind, your spirit, and even your lives. We draw strength and inspiration from good people like you, the participant of this conference, your unwavering support has kept the issue of Tibet alive and support network snowballing. And we draw strength and inspiration from the words of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Tragedy should be used tragedy should be utilized as a source of strength. No matter what sort of difficulties, how painful the experience is, if we lose our hope, that's our real disaster. Yes, we must draw hope from the suffering frames of the martyrdom. We must not lose hope, but hope alone cannot defeat this evil. We must have a tool more powerful than evil. His Holiness tells us, in our struggle for freedom, truth is the only weapon we possess. My dear brothers and sisters, the time has come for us to unite for a campaign of truth. No evil, no matter how strong, can, over, can withstand the force of the truth. Wherever the evil lurks, we must blind it with the light of the truth. Wherever the conscience sleeps, we must awaken it with the sound of the truth. Through the burning flames from Tibet, we must see the truth. These martyrs sacrifice their lives in the most painful way. They did it in the protest against the Chinese rule. This rule has led to the killings of a million Tibetans, the toppling of thousands of temples, the diluting and destroying the Tibetan language and the culture, Irre irreversible damage of the natural environment in Tibet, 
and the more than five decade long exile of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Each time when tensions escalate, instead of showing concern and trying to address root causes, the Chinese regime responds with increasing force and oppression. The increased clampdown on the Tibetans, especially the monks and the nuns, stepped up cultural genocide and ever-growing ethnic oppression have made the situation Tibet unbearable to the Tibetans. Let's listen to the flames. Yes, there are voices in the flames. Free Tibet, let the Dalai Lama return home. When we hear the voices, our conscience permits us nothing but to act as their transmitters and amplifiers, to awaken more people's conscience, to let more people know the truth about these tragedies, and to allow more people to experience, experience these Tibetans' despair and desire to be reborn in the flames. We must press the Western government to speak the truth. The grassroots movement is very important, but it alone is not enough. The Chinese government generally does not respond if the world leaders remain silent, because the only language it can understand is that of power. It does not understand in democracies, power is ultimately with the people. So we must take advantage of our democratic mechanisms to press our government to represent our will in regard to the issue of Tibet. We must not let our government base their policies on the wrong assumption that the CCP rule is permanent. Power has passed to a new generation of leadership in China. It is the nature of tyrannical regimes that they grow weaker and less coherent with each successive generation. We already see the cracks weaken the CCP. We must exploit these cracks by waving the flag of a truth in their faces at every turn. The question of Tibet is a, both a political issue and a moral one. All of humanity is challenged. Every world leader must take this test, just like any test. One either passes or fails. To our great dismay, many world leaders have so far either refused to take the test or failed it. Too many of them just look the other way while our Tibetan brothers and sisters were crying in flames. We should not let our government continue to fail the test politically or morally. We must insist that today silence is no longer an option. We must keep before us the words of Martin Luther King. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. We must challenge, we must challenge the silence of our governments at every turn and press them to confront the lies of the Chinese government with the truth. We must also praise give praise when a world leader does speak the truth. We commend and support U.S. Ambassador Locke's recent actions and the U.N. Human Rights High Commissioner's recent strong statement and welcome them as a big step forward. We must press the Chinese people to end their silence on Tibet. We should make special effort to reach out to them, to confront them with the truth, to appeal 
to their conscience and to let them realize that the suffering of the Tibetan people is the suffering of the Chinese people and that the same government that brings such misery to the Tibetan people is the same government that is jailing their best citizens, robbing the land from a peasant, and controlling the, their right to speak and think freely. We must make Chinese government feel the heat of the fires of the martyrdom from all directions. My dear brothers and sisters, we promise with all our heart, all our physical being and spirit, that we will commit ourselves to this campaign of truth. With, with our combined help, the world will learn the truth, the world will know the truth, the world will speak the truth, and in the end, the truth will set us free. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters.